I'll deal with you later. You smell too? Sabbaths ye should keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am a higher that do sanctify you. For ye should keep the Sabbath therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defileth should surely be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul should be cut off from among his people. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest, holy to a higher. Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he should be put to death. Wherefore, the children of Israel should keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. Leviticus chapter 23, the middle of 32. From evening unto evening shall ye celebrate your Sabbath. Okay, okay, okay. It's a Sabbath, y'all. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Go do what you... What, hey, go. How you doing? Good. 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 Welcome, my brother Nelson. Thank you. Um, I am Elder and Brother Ma'ai. This is Brother Rook from Waking the Highest Church. Here once again, the grace of the Most High to sit before you all and present another one of his Sabbath lessons. The title is Desire with Sincerity, the Milk, and Grow in Christ. Desire with Sincerity, the milk and growing Christ. Okay? It's, it's a. Uh, oh, before we get started, we're going to give our praise to the Most High Higher by Hashem Yasha. That's the name of the Most High. Always give him all the honor and the praise and the glory through his son Christ. Uh, Say his name in Hebrew, Yasha. Um, it, it's an interesting uh, topic today. You know, to desire the sincere, the sincere milk of the word. You know, we have a lot of people because, you know, since Adam died, one of the curses of, of, of the people, of our people, would be that we would seek knowledge. You know, and then it's written in, in the prophets that um, knowledge shall increase. So people think when it's written that knowledge shall increase, that don't mean all knowledge it's good that's increasing. You know, because as we learn throughout um, history and reading this Bible, that the fallen angels led by Lucifer or Satan has always educated in error the people. Okay? Bring many sins and, and um, transgressions to the earth. Okay? So it's because this knowledge, it don't make it good. You know, it's like when, when Satan 
uh, enticed Eve to sin, he offered her the knowledge of his tree, of his tree, of good and evil. You know, something that the Most High did not create or establish. Right? Um, so the Bible encourages us to desire this is still milk. The Similac. Right? It says meat are for men, for adults. But meat would never save anyone's soul. The milk will. And the scriptures are going to relay that. So again, like how I, how I encourage and teach all y'all constantly, when you open this Bible up, don't open the Bible up with the spirit of debate, the spirit of uh, revival, the spirit of competition, the spirit of uh, pride. Like, like yeah, you can't get in this book and think the Most High is going to give you his truth if that's the spirit you possess. I was telling the brother in Kibbez, I said, bro, you know, still to this day, on my 12th time to read this Bible, every time I open the pages, I'm not, I don't care about precepts. Although I, I know two or three of them. You know, through the labor, you know, I've put forth. But I never read this Bible and still up to day to be able to, you know, come back or debate with people. Every time I open this Bible up, my intention is to get to know more about my Heavenly Father. That's it. Rest will come. So don't open the Bible and try to get the priests up so when you go in the street, somebody asks you a question, you can stand up for the faith. It won't happen like that. You know, the Most High will, will teach you who, we are, who, who your Father is. And then you'll be able to explain your Father through precepts. That's how it works, but you have to come to him in sincerity, a pure heart, a pure desire to get to know your father who you've been alienated from your whole life. You know? So, let's get it. First Peter chapter 2, verse 1 through 2. We're going to break down some of these words as well. Everyone turn their phones on vibrate. I just said turn mine on vibrate. Uh, chapter, First Peter chapter two, starting at verse one. <clears throat> Calm when everyone's there. And it reads, wherefore laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speaking. As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. All right, now let's, let's, let's break this down. Let's start from verse 1. It says, whereby, laying aside all malice. Let's look up what malice is. Mm -hmm. Malice, that's G2549, 20, and that says badness, that is, depravity, malignity, evil, Maliciousness, naughtiness, wickedness. Now, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a, um, define the definition of it in English, okay? Which is the, that is the English, but that's, that's the Greek right there. Mm -hmm. It says the quality or state of being corrupt, evil, or perverted. Okay? So we must lay these things aside. And it, and it says as newborn babes. Babies don't possess these traits. You see? These are traits that are learned through a, a wicked environment. So now when you come into the knowledge of the Most High, these are traits and spirits we must lay aside. It says that's a newborn babe. Let's give it a couple more words. Now, don't we? Con, next word. Uh, you got the, uh, guile. Guile. That's G1388. Let me see. And it, and it uh and that means to trick, 
decoy, wow, crab the sea, guy, subtility. And one of the words in there was decoy, right? Mm -hmm. That someone or something used to lure or lead another into a trap. Mm -hmm. Now, Christ called this a hypocrite. So we cannot be a hypocrite. Because even though a lot of us think that, see, in, in, in this, this is the fine line that we must cross and never go back. Creating our own righteousness is hypocritical. You know, we say this all the time, but lean on your own understanding of what the most high commands against. It's hypocritical. Because Satan is using you as a decoy. In your mind, you think you're doing what's pleasing to the most high. Mm -hmm. But you put the stumbling block before your brothers and your sisters. Mm -hmm. you're, Satan is using you to entice someone to sin because if they see you do something, the chances are highly likely that they're going to want to do it too. Because our people are more... They have more desire to, to live or to fulfill the lust of the flesh than the, than the lust of the spirit. Yeah. You know, because someone could say, well, I seen brothers and sisters do it, so no, here is a light. Mm -hmm. It must be right. Who led Israel astray? Gentiles or Israelites? Israelites. What's my old slogan? Follow Christ. I said, follow not Israel. Follow Christ, the Messiah. Because Israel will lead you astray every time. Christ will not. That's what I'm about. See, and that's the thing about Christianity that this erupts my spirit. Because if you really read this Bible, I mean, as I said, say the earlier with sincerity and simplicity. <clears throat> It destroys Christianity. Today's lesson is going to go down to the stuff for real. Like, how can one say, if I, I mean, this is, it's the most high, I would not let it leave my heart because it's his foundation, his law. How can one speak so such a blasphemous thing and say his law is done away with? When you read these scriptures, it's saying nothing like that. Like, what we talk about right now is being sinless, being innocent of crime, being innocent of sin as a newborn babe. But also, it's, it's the, the, the title is to desire with sincerity the milk as a newborn babe. So that's the picture the Most High is painting us. We went over this a year or two or three ago. Let's, let's visualize the picture. You're going to see it. Y'all going to see it real soon. Well, you know, with most High will it may be blessing it and come out. He come out or she. <laughs> Crying, what would that child be crying for? Milk. Who? Milk. 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 Why? Milk. Speak up. Who are we going to speak? Speak up. Raise your hand and speak up. Yes. Go. I was going to say it's natural. It's natural. Explain yourself. That's the function that they were for at that time. Like, That's the function they were? We're created for it. We're created well, for it. Well, I mean, I don't know how to put it. A baby desires milk. That's a baby desires milk. Okay, what are you going to say? Because he's hungry. Because he's hungry. Survival. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like it's, a, it's a natural instinct to survive. To survive <clears throat> it's a natural instinct to survive. One must be fed. Mm -hmm. Must eat. It's natural. It's, it's, a, it, it's an instinct. Survival method most I put in us, but it's written also in the law, man must not live on bread alone, but on every utterance out of the most high's mouth. So just as that newborn baby, the most high is putting it on paper again to paint a picture how we must desire his word as a newborn babe. Are we crying, yearning for it? When we don't get it, we cry louder. Are we? Because it says, in it you will grow. And if we don't take this approach, we will not enter the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, on earth. Now you see why the Most High says, eat his robe, fill thy bowels. As a newborn babe, we must desire 
his word. Can you really understand why Satan has put a, such a marvelous attack of, and deception on God's people to encourage them, to trap them, to snare them, not to read their Bible? In it, you will grow and get life. It says, as, a new, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. Because it says we have to grow. This word will make us grow. I'm not going to put the cart before the horse, but we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, uh, approach this in a second. Okay? Yes. Yes. Did we go there yet? No, not yet. Last one. No, that's the next priest. Oh, yeah. Get it. Okay. And it also says, and envies and all evil speakings. See, babies don't do this. Babies don't do the things that, that, that we're reading about. People who have been uh, programmed do these things. Okay? And that word uh, in the Greek is G2636, and it says defamation or backbiting, evil speaking. Also, uh, a slander, backbite. It was something else that I wanted to get there, too. I think I'm going to get it in a... Let's go to Sincere, uh, G97. You know what? Let's stop for a minute. Okay. No, let's go to Sincere. Let's get Sincere, then, then the evil speaking, I'm going to break down the precept. Okay, because it's not always talking about what we just mentioned. Okay? It's talking about something great. It, yes, we're going to use two connotations to evil speaking. That was one. We will get what sincere means, and then we're going to get into evil speaking. Okay. Okay. Well, let me get James four eleven. Next precept: the book of James, chapter four, verse eleven. So, could you, like for example, if a brother or sister is doing something in their life and it, and it become. Uh, to our knowledge. It's not wrong for us to speak about it. The Bible speaks about it. Right? But it's going to get into judging. Okay? Which the world has destroyed that precept. But, but the scriptures are going to say exactly what it means. Let's get it. 411, James. And it reads, Speak not evil one of another. Brethren, he that speaketh evil of his brother and judgeth his brother, speaketh evil of the law, and judgeth the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. judge. Right. Now, it's not talking about what, what we assume it's talking about. All right? Speaking evil of your brother is when you have really, like, condemned your brother. We have condemned your sister. Calling them names. Like, that's such and such anger. Like, you're cursing your brother, not blessing him. Okay? If your brother's out of funny we talk about funny cake. That's not speaking evil, brother. That's just what it is. Okay? If we had to encourage our brother or sister to quit funny cake, or whatever it is. Next precept. We're going we're gonna to show you what it's talking about. Uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 and 5. So the world, look at know the, know the scriptures when it says, judge not your brother. But, but it's, we are commanded to judge our brothers and our sisters within the church, not on the outside. Okay? Let's get it. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 1. And it reads, Judge not that ye be not judged. See, judge not. That's what the word said. You can't judge me. Only God can judge me. But what does Christ say in verse 5? Verse 5. Thou hypocrite. He's talking to the hypocrites. Thou hypocrite. What? First, cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. See that? Because we don't, we don't judge ourselves first. He said we will not be judged if we judge ourselves. But if I'm doing something and telling you not to do it, I will be judged. It's not saying don't judge your brother or your sister. And that will mean you sent them to, to death. But this is one who loved their brother or sister. Like, it says, cast out the moat, I mean, the beam, which is larger than the moat. Mm -hmm. and then you see clearly how to help your brother out. You see what I'm saying? 
So that's what Christ is talking about. That's what the Most High is talking about when it says, judge not, lest you be judged, you hypocrite. You see? That's why it's important for us all to have freedom of speech. Because then the person can't point the finger back at you and see that you're laboring in this work. But if you're doing it, then what can you do to tell me to stop doing something? See, because we will be judged. Okay? Now, sincere. Mm -hmm. G97. Getting back to, to this word. Got it. <clears throat> Sincere G97 says, undeceitful, that is, unadulterated. <clears throat> unadulterated, right? Sincere, calm. Unadulterated. So let's get what adulterated means. So the word of God is pure as it's written, right? Mm -hmm. Okay? So to seek the pure word of the Most High, what is adulterated, weakened, or lessened in purity by the addition of foreign or inferior substance or elements? See, that's your religious. They have weakened God's word with, with the, what was called the replacement theory. Or gospel, uh, whatever you want to call it. It's a replacement of God's pure word with man's seditious and ideologies. They have lessened the power of the Most High's word. Now, what does, so obviously unadulterated means the opposite. Okay? So we are to seek the unadulterated, pure word of the Most High. We cannot mix traditions of men, ideals of men, philosophies of men with the unadulterated truth of the Most High. And that's what that's what I'm saying. Like that's why I'm on Christians all the time because if you just right then, right there, that kills Christianity. The Bible never tells us to celebrate Christ's birthday. See, that's replacing something. That's putting something there. That's adding something to His Word. You see, never tells us to be lawless. It never tell us not to read our Bible and just go to church and listen to what the pastor said. Yes, brother. Oh. It says, seek the word as a newborn baby. So why aren't my Christian brothers and sisters throughout the congregation reading their Bible? None of them are reading the Bible. I mean, I'm sorry. 2% of them read, probably read their Bible. But right there, it's telling you. Unadulterated. Period. Seek it. You will grow in it. Right? Next precept. Next precept, the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verses 1 and 2. same time came the disciples unto Yah. You shaking your head like this? As far as what? I'm talking babies. Oh, I'm talking about babies. I ain't talking about no teenagers who are spelling themselves. They've been... They, they, They've been influenced, <laughs> okay? Right, right, right. But babies, my son and his cousin, they, they fight, but they ain't fighting about who the greatest. They fight because cause they, they, they don't want to share toys. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, but it's showing you that these men at the time, this is his disciples. Although they whipped them, it's, that's why I said we must grow in Christ. So take heed. They with Christ, and they still think internally. See what I'm saying? 
So it, it takes time to grow in Christ. To become a perfect, mature man or woman spiritually. It takes time. They, they with Christ. They've been with him. They were out who would be the greatest in the kingdom. Right. What did Christ say? Verse 2. And Yahshua called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them. So he called a little child, set him in the midst. He don't teach a lesson, but let's get to this little child. Story. Let's go to a precept. Let's go to Psalms 131. Mm -hmm. Psalms chapter 131, verse 1 and 2. Hold me on that, because coming right back. Psalms 131 verse 1 and it reads Lord my heart is not haughty nor my eyes lofty Stop. now this is our father David Showing that, he, that when it comes came to spiritual, spirituality, he had the mindset of a child. Humble. You see? He said, what? A higher. My heart is not haughty. Children, babies are not haughty. They're bad, but they're not haughty. Okay? Mm -hmm. Nor are my eyes lofty. Right? Neither do I exercise myself in great matters. That's a million questions, but it's nothing great. It's that they're not as babes asking for meat. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like, for example, I, I, I gave an example a while ago. It's a brother that I, 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 that I know a while ago. He called me, and I said, y'all know this story. He called me a while ago and asked me for uh, um, insight on a, on a weightier matter. And I realized, I said, brother, you ask me about this and you breaking the Sabbath right now? What's this greater? You keeping the Sabbath or this issue that, let's deal with the Sabbath first. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A basic, a fundamental. You see what I'm saying? It's not about all this knowledge. It's about obedience to what we know. Mm -hmm. See, babies don't ask for, you know, um, how to fill out a resume for a job. My son don't know anything about it. Right. It has no profit to him to know right now at five years old how to do a resume. No. Can't even comprehend it. But things that he needs, we give him. And that's how the most high deals with us as his children. Mm -hmm. Things we need, he gives us to him in due time as we labor in our diligent, in our diligent search for him. Okay? So if you come into the most high trying to receive knowledge, like I said, you must come with this mentality, this spirit. If you come seeking things that's higher than you, he, he's not going to give it to you. You'll be tossed to and fro. Hmm. Read. Neither do I exercise myself in great matters or in things too high for me. Surely I have behaved and quieted myself as a child that is weaned of his mother. My soul is even as a weaned child. See, this is an example that Most High used our Father David for us. This is how we must be with the Most High. As a child, we, see, not a teenager, bro. A child, we off his mother. Get it? That's the spirit we must have. Get quiet, please. Mm hmm. That word quieted, that's H1826. And it says, to be astonished, to stop, to cease, to be cut down or off, forbear, to hold peace, to quiet self, rest, be silent, keep, uh, keep silent, put to silence, to still, tarry, and to wait. So, 
in the minute we'll get the scriptures where it tells us how we must function, like when we come to you know class, is it, it, the Bible tell us to you know be swift at, at hearing, slow to speak, be more ready to learn than to run our minds, thinking that we know something. And David, you know, has much experience, but that's not what he, when he deals with, with, with the Most High and the Most High's business. He's not coming with a, with, a, with a healthy spirit going to tell the Most High something or the Most High's prophets or his high priest or his priest something. David went to them and inquired of the Most High. That's, that's what you'll find about David. And that's, that's another thing. We read in the Bible it says that David treated the Most High with David did sacrifice. David did not do a sacrifice. He went to the priest. He went to the prophet, he went to the priest and asked them to inquire of the Most High. You know? So, he didn't sit and tell them to the priest what he knows. He went to the priest to hear what the Most High was going to say. And sometimes the Most High appeared to David, personally, through an angel. You know what I'm saying? But David had the spirit of what he's, he's explaining to the Most High right now as an example for us. Okay? Next precept. Back ne to the uh, <clears throat> Matthew. Mm -hmm. Next precept, Matthew 18, verses 3 through 14. Check out the first thing Christ said. This is a prerequisite to get into the kingdom. Okay? And it reads, And said, Verily, I say unto you, Except ye be converted. Except ye be converted. What does converted mean? It means to turn again. Right? To be changed. Right? Mm -hmm. We must be converted from, from the doctrines of Satan. From the, from the lies that we have been taught through, through our families and, and, and through this and through the through the educational systems and and the, and the whole program that Satan has so wonderfully created to keep our people in the darkness and under deception, we must be changed from that, and that ties into being born again. He was born into sin. That does not mean, as we know in here, that that doesn't mean you, you're born a sinner. We're born, that means being born into sin. Where everything a child is exposed to is wicked. And anyone that have, have, have had children, well, it's hard to understand that if, if you're wicked. Because I, I swear to you, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years ago, if I had a child, well, well, I, well, I did. I married a woman who had children. And the things that I taught them were wicked. Not knowing how seemingly wicked they were. You understand what I'm saying? So in turn, that makes them wicked. So when you're in it, you don't see it as bad as it is. You, you understand? But now those of us who have come out of the darkness, in the filth of this world, you see? We see it. We, we, we see it. And we are obligated, we have a great responsibility, a divine order, to do what? Protect our children and show them different. Because remember, they're born into sin. So right now, it's extremely hard for me to turn on TV and watch cartoon with my son without seeing all this sorcery. Took them to the basketball court a couple of days ago. Everybody next used the profanity. You're, you're in the midst of it. That's why we're obligated to show our children different. So that they may grow up in the most high. They must they, they grew up in Christ and be able to at, at, when they get to a certain age to discern what's evil and what's good, according to the most high. But being born again, as we get into it right now, that's from the power and the spirit of the most high. Through his word and spirit. He has to create in us a new person with a different education. Okay? Also, you must be baptized to start the, you know, it goes, it goes synonymous with the washing of the word. The washing of the word is not baptism. Baptism is fully submerged in, is fully submerged in, 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 in the water. But then we must grow in Christ through his word, being born again, being converted different than what we was trained to be. Okay? Let's go. And, this, and it reads, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted 
and become as little children, ye shall ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. And become as little children, getting back to the mentality we must have. If you come to this thing thinking you know it all, you are not coming to Christ as a little child. Mm -hmm. You come with a hawky spirit and a bunch of other spirits. You see? If you come here, like I said, you come here because you, you want to, you know, tell the whole world how wrong they are, you're not coming as a little child. You know, a child just won't, you know, to hear from their parents. Like, seriously, like, if I'm in the house with, with, with my son and I go downstairs, he's screaming for his daddy. We're in the same house. You know, like, son, I'm not going to leave you. But when you open your mouth, he, he wants to hear what's coming out of his parents' mouth. He asks questions. Dad, mom, dad, mom, why, 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 why? Don't get my shirt with why on it, I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> you know, but why, why, why? He wants to know. You know? Are we asking the most high? Why, 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 why? How, 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 how? When, 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 when? You know? As a, as a, as a little child, we must come to the most high. Read. Verse 4. Whosoever, therefore, shall humble himself as, the, as this little child. We must humble ourselves. Okay? The same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So, it's showing you. You can't do it being great because whosoever humbles themselves is the greatest. So it's, it's not one person that's the greatest. Mm. You're great to the most high because you're a beating child. You humbled yourself. You had an ear to hear. You see? That's how it works. We humble ourselves, open our ears up and our hearts so we can be converted. And as Christ said, he healed us from our spiritual sickness. Three. Verse 5. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. Now also it's a little child. Guess what it's also talking about? Anyone know? When it's speaking about a little a little child or a little one, I said, besides what we just described, what else is it talking about? Christ. Hmm? Could it be Christ? Hmm? Could it be Christ? No, no, no. no. So it could be Christ, no. Who? No, not the Holy Spirit. Yes. Also, a little child. Thank you, my Jay, my head. What do you say? Someone not, without a lot of knowledge, someone that's immature in the faith. Mm -hmm. See. So, go ahead, Jake. The young brother, sit here and ask him My nephew, go ahead. But that's what it's talking about as well. So, someone, it says, whosoever receive one of these, you know, as, as an immortal, no, I mean, that's what I said, be mindful of yourself. Mm -hmm. You know? It's a time when you didn't know what you knew. Mm -hmm. You can't expect them to know what you know. Operate how you operate. So, we had to show mercy, mm -hmm. which is one of the greatest parts of the law. To show mercy. God. So, for example, we have brothers and sisters who have left the church for their own apparent reasons. You know, we can't, like, none of us have an issue with any of them. I hope y'all watch them too. Good, you need to watch and listen to the truth. Because none of them have issue with any of you. So, when they do, if it be the most high will and they do come back, we have to receive them with mercy, with thanksgiving, like the prodigal son. The pure sin, the prodigal son. Do y'all have y'all read that story? Mm -hmm. Well, the prodigal son was one who 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 uh, went to his father and asked for all his inheritance. He wanted to live his life. He wanted to go out in the world and try it out. When he went out in the world, he realized that how good he had it at home because how he got treated and robbed of his inheritance. He realized that service in his father's house was living better than these people who thought they had something. And he came back home when his father saw him fall off. Look. I mean, up far off. He, he told his son, go get the, his best garment. He told his wife, get that thing going on in the kitchen. We have a feast. My son have returned. You see? That's the same joy before the have when the Most High has shown grace to our brothers and sisters who have been led astray by Satan. And the Most High has shown them grace and showing them that he still loved them. 
and to give them an opportunity to come back, a, a multiply, and say, have an opportunity of saving their soul. We, we can't close the door up on them. I don't think none of us got the spirit to do that anyway. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So whatever the reason is, my brothers and sisters, cut it out and come back to church. Most I love you, and we do too. We cannot profess to love the most high and don't love you. Uh, okay? Yes, so, sir. yes. We, was, we talked about having a haunted, a, haunted, a haunted spirit, and I wrote down, how do you know when to speak without having that haunted spirit? Meaning, if you're able to, if someone come up to you, and not really, not as a challenge, but, or an argument, just to ask you some questions, but you don't, you, you haven't completely read the whole book. How do you, how do you speak to, can you, can you speak to them without, you know, like, I'm thinking I'm teaching them something. Even though, I don't, I don't want to say it right, but I want to be able to talk to people, but it seems like you're not supposed to do that yet, because you still, I'm still a babe. So are you able to give, convert some information that you, that what I've learned, without having the haunted spirit. He'll give you the word definition for haunted first. Yep. Uh, so that's H uh, 1361 and it says to soar, be lofty. Soar, like, like, you know, like an eagle soar, he's high. Okay. Exalt, be haughty, to be high, to be higher, to make higher. Lift up, mount, be proud. Raise up to great height, upward. Okay. Now let's stumble. Let's say you use this in the connotation of a mentality, to make mm -hmm. higher. So okay, the spirit of that is like you're better than them. Mm -hmm. You have this knowledge. A prideful, haughty spirit is different than one who answer a this answer a question this on GP. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I got the English definition too. It says blatantly and disdainfully proud. Having or showing an attitude of superiority and contempt for people or things perceived to be inferior. You show contempt to people. What are you showing? Hmm? Like, like a distaste. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like the Pharisees. Exactly. So that's what's come on, brother. You know what I'm saying? The Bible tells us to always be, be ready to, uh, to get reason for your hope. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But it's talking about a spirit with it. That's why I say if you're coming into this truth for that reason, what we just read, you will you you never receive it. You'll forever be learning and never come to acronize the truth. Mm -hmm. Because you're not coming. Like for example, like you know, somebody asks you a question, but you, you're supposed to answer a question. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Now what I was referring to, like when you come to class, you know what I'm saying? It says be more prepared to, to listen than to speak. So come learn the doctrine. If you have a question, then ask a question. But, you know, don't come to class trying to teach, the, like, me something. Like, that's your whole goal is to come here and teach me something. Like, I, I got people that I know. Used to be on the phone all the time. Like, the whole premise of trying to find out about the most high was to prove me wrong. Mm -hmm. That's the wrong spirit to have. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that you can't teach me something. But why are you trying to teach me something? Is it this spirit or... Or do you really have some information? Your information, I don't know. I'll dig into it and we can go through it. I prove that. But every week you come to me come on some <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, you know, that's 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 the wrong spirit. If you have a question, let the question more so be pertaining to the class, to the to the lesson. You know, it's brothers who try to come into church, I talk to them on the phone, and through the spirit most high, I tore that spirit down. They teach them to come here, you know, to try to go against our doctrine. You get the point, brother. If you think you know, that the white man is evil, bro, this ain't the place for you. Hmm. Now, I speak about white people all, all the time. And some may see me wrong, take me wrong of how I'm speaking. But I'm not really saying all white people are, are evil. But as a nation, they are. As a nation, our people are evil. Mm -hmm. We've learned to be disliked them. As a nation, Africans are evil. As a nation, the whole world is evil. That's why they're getting destroyed. But Most High has given us an example in His Bible to what to do to, to be born again, to be a new creature, not to follow the patterns and in, in, in what we've been deceived by, not, not, not to follow that. 
So when I'm speaking about the white people, I'm talking about this, what Satan has used them to lure us into sin. They evil. The ones on top, they know what, what, what they're doing. This, 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 I got a picture. I was coming home in the truck a few days ago. I'm looking in the sky. I called, I called my, uh, my mom. Hold on. I called my mom. Look, look, look in the sky. I have never seen the sky look like this in my life. It looked fake. It's like a, like, like a drawing. White clouds trimmed in gray. And then the farther you look farther, I mean, the farther you, you, that, that you look, it's all hazy. It's like a picture. And next thing, guess what? It rained for days. Yes. Because the scientists, they go and teach. So we are, because you can teach, but you're supposed to pray for discernment. Like somebody asked me a question. You're supposed to pray for discernment. And you, you read in your scriptures and stuff. You can, you're giving you that thought or whatever. You're putting your mind back and remembering. But you're understand, going in the right mindset. But understand what you said. First of all, what, what did the Bible say? It says, humble yourselves. Mm -hmm. Humble and haughty are contrast one to another. Mm -hmm. So to humble yourself, you must be honest with yourself. And that's what a lot of our brothers and sisters fail at. Because they want to act like they know something, and now they're lying on the most high, as opposed to saying, brother, you know what? You know, I'm young in this thing too, man, but you know, this is, I can tell you what I know, but I, I, I can call my elder, we can call right now on a three-way, or I can call brother such and such, you know, and get an answer for you. Because like, I remember now, I was young in it. I said, look, I don't, I don't know the answer. I will go you know, to the brothers, which I did often, and consult with them and come back to you with, with an answer. But I'm not going to sit and tell you something that, that I know is wrong and I'm trying to appear to be knowledgeable. Mm -hmm, exactly. That's haughty. And, and it's judgment for, you know, for that. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But then again, like you're saying, how can you, how can somebody brought back to your remembrance that you don't know? Mm -hmm. So if you, don't, you ain't reading, the Holy Spirit ain't bringing nothing back, ain't nothing to bring back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You digging, the, you know, you, you digging it on the, you know, uh, uh, and saying and, and hoping that, you know, you, you can plant something. It ain't fertile ground. Hmm. Flowers grow well. There's some stuff growing in the desert, cactus and stuff. But primarily, you want to plant a flower, it, it needs to be a fertile ground. So if you had trying to plant you a flower and, and, and saying, it, you know, chance that thing doing something is very slim. Hmm. You see what I'm saying? So you got to dig, my brother. We all got to dig into this word. And like she said, we must pray to the most high for a spirit for understanding. Okay? Let's get it. Did, did that answer your uh, question, bro? Okay. So don't feel, you know, bad about asking questions. That, that means you, you, you're, you're haughty. But if you're one of the finger pointers, you know, and act like you know something, then you, you run across somebody that knows more than you do. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I just want to add, that's what makes it haughty. Like, say you're dealing with somebody, somebody might have a question, or say somebody ain't even got a question like this, because we don't eat pork. So like, let's say you walk around somebody eating pork, like you make a snarly remark at them. You can have a conversation with them, like, man, you know you shouldn't eat that, but it shouldn't be something you just sparking out of nowhere just to tell them that they're wrong for eating pork, because we don't do it no more, even though it is. Now, if they, they see your conduct and see you different, oh, man, you don't, then, you know, that's where the conversation can start. That's a non haughty way to go about that. But if I see somebody eating pork and I just go over there and say a smart remark or something to them about it, that's not, that's haughty. You see what I'm saying? So that's, that's like, that's the difference there. You know, just using that as an example. So. Yeah. Where we at? Uh, verse 6. And it reads, but whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me? Check it out. Now, what does that word offend mean? It don't, it don't mean, you know, say something that, you know, make them feel bad. Mm -hmm. Okay? What, what does that word offend mean? Entice to sin. Stumble. Right? So if someone knew it true, that's what I say, y'all. Like, it's many cases, people, this came to class, two lessons. And, and, the, and the sister is speaking about stuff that she should not be speaking about. You know, you can't do that. You have to be mindful that what you're saying can be very detrimental to the spiritual, to the spiritual growth of someone. How you're acting to stumble this person, they never come back. So Christ is warning us. You cause one of my people to sin. That's why I, that's why I say all the time. I even say this song. You know, 
stumble his children if he wants to. It's serious. We cannot put a stumbling block before his children. So, who so shall what? But who so shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me? It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depths of the sea. <laughs> Christ ain't playing. Mm -hmm. So how we conduct ourselves, how we speak, is very important. He says, it's better you, you, you have a millstone tied around your neck and drowned in the sea than stumble one of his people who believe in him. They was on a, on a righteous path and you just blocked them. The lost faith, this is the last hope that, that these people had. They came on to Christianity, came on to Islam, came on all this garbage, Egyptology and more science, and, and, and not even the truth, and then you stumbled them? You, you're blocking the work of the Most High? Christ has been that you was drowning in the sea with a millstone. You're going straight to the Bible. You know what I'm saying? Quickly. Let's get it. Verse 7. Woe unto the world because of, of the, offenses. Destruction to the world because of offenses. That's what we talking about. A child is born into sin. The world, he said, woe, destruction to the world because of its offenses. Because how they have created a system of sin. Mm -hmm. It's against the Bible. For all the people that think the Bible is fake, you, you, I, hey, I pray for you. This Bible is the realest thing that ever existed. The leaders of the world know that to it to be real. For a fact, that's why they created a, a world of offenses to keep the children of Israel in sin so that they have dominion over them. Again, the Bible said that the children of Israel, if they sin against the Most High, break His laws, they would be in a cursed people and be oppressed and only spoiled, serving their enemies in want of all things and become the tail and not the head. So why wouldn't the Gentile nations create a system of offenses, of offenses, deceptions. Get it? That doesn't make so much sense. So Christ says the, the world is about to get destroyed because of its offenses. Good offenses. Mm -hmm. Offenses. G4625. A scandal. A trap stick. That is a snare. Cause of displeasure or sin, occasion to fall or stumbling. So the world has done that. Read that again. <coughs> occasion to fall or of stumbling. They have created systems. Everything that we, anything that we see or hear from them, it does what? It causes people to do what? Uh, to fall or of stumbling uh, or of stumbling. A stumbling to fall from who? The grace of the Most High. Keep reading. Next piece. I mean, piece uh, woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come. But woe to that man by whom the offenses come. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life half, hot or maimed, rather than having two hands or two feet. To be cast into everlasting fire. So whatever Satan is using to snare you, to keep you entangled in sin, Christ is saying, cut it off. Stop it. Cast it far from you. Whatever it may be. So it's better for you to go into life, which is the kingdom. Main. Than to go into hell hole. With two feet, with two hands, with, with two eyes. Mm -hmm. Right? Read. Verse 9. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hellfire. Take heed. And all those who believe hell is real, Christ is telling He speaks a lot about hell. Hellfire. Mm hmm. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you, that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. And that's what people don't understand. All people have an angel of presence. Mm -hmm. And Christ is saying, the angel always behold the face of the Most High. They're going at sunset to report to the Most High. 
Christ will tell you what, what, the, uh, the, what uh, the Apostle Paul said in the Apocalypse of Paul about us having angels of presence from birth. That sunset, they go and report to Christ everything we've said and done is recorded on the heavenly tablets. So he said, be careful because you're not getting away with it. It's reported. It says, take heed that he despise not one of these little ones. See, that's the Holy Spirit. That's what, that's what she, my mom was saying um, about the Pharisees. They despised so-called sinners and they were sinners themselves. So we can't look at somebody like, like we're better than them. It says, of course, I say unto you that in heaven, their angels, it didn't say angels, okay. their angels, the angel of presence, as Christ is referring to, do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. So understand, again, my people out there who don't understand this, you have an angel of presence that's with you always. And at sunset, they go and report to Christ. Everything you say and do. That's why Christ says, you know, that those who keep his laws, he profess to their father. I mean, he profess to, their, to, their, to, their, to his father. He will fight for you. He's your intercessor. If you think not, I will not accuse you to the father, though. If you despise his law, he will accuse you to the father. I'm sorry, but when you get accused to the father, there's only one thing coming for you. His angels. <laughs> okay? So that's his real talk. And that's what the religious don't want to teach you, but it's all in the book. But how would you know if you have a teacher? Your teacher was programmed to deceive you and thinking, like, for example, and, and we will get into it in a minute. When the Bible says, you know, be not a babe, whatever, or tossed to and fro in every wind of doctrine. Mm -hmm. For you Christians, how can you not have a doctrine and believe it's up to your own personal interpretation when the Bible is talking about being tossed to and fro to, in different doctrines? A doctrine is a fundamental teaching what the church stands on. It's warning you not to be a babe in this faith, in this word. Because a babe will listen to everything. But if, but the Bible wants, the most I want you, you know, to lean on your own understanding, which she commands you not to, but your professor makes no sense to the, according to the Bible. He didn't create you for you to figure out by yourself. You have your own children as an example to prove that, that condemns you. You don't have children and tell them to go figure it out. Right. What would you tell them? It's up to them to interpret what you're saying. You whoop them. You chastise them so they can do what you say do. That's what the Most High do to His children. That's why we are in captivity. That's why we are His servant, our enemies. And life is hard. It's a little chastisement, as He says. As He says. says. He's chastising us, trying to bring back to remembrance through his word who we are and why we are going through what we are going through and how to come back to him and have peace with him. Because right now, Christ says, woe to the world that y'all think he loves so much. He hates this world. This world is of Satan. He has to see all his children. So he says, woe, destruction to this world because the offenses. The offenses are against the law. Of God. So he has not left up to your own interpretation. That's a lie. That you continue to. Regurgitate. Christ has a doctrine. It's right here in the Bible. You're learning it if you're watching this video. Right now today. Obedience to his law. Obedience to the words of the Messiah. Christ came with laws. The same laws as Moses had. His law, we must grow up into. We must receive them as a babe. Cast aside all the, the, the blasphemous lies that we have learned throughout our whole life. We must have our perceptive powers retrained in the most high truth. As we grow up in Christ into the full understanding of to be able to discern what's evil and what's righteous. In the, in, only in the instructions of righteousness, which is this Bible. That's the, hey, that's the prescription. Let's get it. Verse 11. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. He come to save that which is lost. Who was lost? The lost house 
lost sheep of the house of Israel. The world been lost, but he, he said he came for his own. And after his death, his resurrection, he opened the doors for the Gentiles to have a way to save themselves from the wrath of the Most High. Mm -hmm. He didn't give them a kingdom. He didn't make them a covenant. He told Abraham that these Gentiles will be blessed through him. They come through him. If they are obedient to the God of the Hebrews. Okay? Woe would not come to them. If they come to serve the God, like, 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 in, the, like in the Bible when it says that a heathen will, hold a, will come and hold the skirt of he that is a Jew. So we have heard that God is with you people. That wasn't an Israelite from the northern kingdom. A real bloodline uh, uh, Gentile. Trying earnestly to save their souls. It's prophecy. Right? Verse 12. How think ye if a man have a hundred sheep and one of them be gone astray? Do not Doth he not leave the ninety and nine and go into the mountains and seeketh that which is gone astray? And if so be that he find it, verily I say unto you, he rejoiceth more of that sheep than of the ninety and nine which went not astray. And that goes back into like the prodigal son. Mm -hmm. And we spoke about those who had who left the church for every reason that they had left the church. Right? If we go searching for them, that means calling you, texting y'all. We can't force y'all to come back. So if Christ will find a sheep, we can't force the sheep to come back. The sheep is fighting, kicking, kicking, and eventually you're like, okay, well, hey, say it in. You know what I'm saying? But the door is open. And if you do come back, he says, will we not rejoice over that one that, that was lost and going astray than those who are sitting in class right now? Y'all with the Father. We with the Father. Like the, like, like the Father said to his son, that was jealous because it's like, well, I've been here all this time. You done dicked this dude out. He's been going and did this, 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 and you ain't did this with me. He said, son, you've been with me. You, you had me all this time. Your brother was lost, and now he's found. Rejoice. An example of how the Most High truly feels about his people. That's why I said, well, when one sinner repents, the angels in the Most High rejoice. So how can we go against the spirit of the Most High concerning his people? There's nothing that a brother and sister can do to us to go to be contrary to the spirit of the most high. Now, do we have feelings about them sometimes? Yes, we do. They have them about us. But, but at the end of the day, we are the most high's children that he's calling. I, I, I mean, I heard a while ago, I couldn't believe it. A brother tried to go back to the church and the elder said, Negro, please. Mm. I couldn't believe it. I said, what? I read the text message. He said, Negro, please. And I said, oh my goodness. Even the brother who, who, who sent the text, he's like, mercy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But do you know what that's... Christ says that we just read it. This is the elder. How can you block the door of a, of a child of the Most High that's trying to come back to you? Christ don't say, Negro, please. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Get away from me. I never knew you. You know? But that's one who don't fear or know the most high. You know? But anyway, let's go. Mm -hmm. Verse 14. Even so, it is not the will of so like, it is not the will of your father which is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. See, the most high is patient. Let's turn it the, the most high is patient with us. It's not his will that he destroy us. He sends our angels down here constantly. Get his children to repent. When they come back with bad news, he said, "Go back, and and I will, and I will forgive them. But if they do not repent, I will deal with them." He don't want to destroy us. But if you don't, if you don't re repent and be conver and convert. He will deal with you. Okay. Read the uh, next precept. Wait, 
Next precept, the book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 14. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think 14. No, 14 was it? Yeah, that was the last verse. 19, 14, no. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 19, verse 14. Now check it out. I just gave a, gave a, a great example going to this precept. Got this precept even here, but let's go. And it reads, But Yasha said, Suffer, suffer little children. Allow the little children. Allow those who are babes in the truth. Allow his children, regardless. Mm -hmm. We all true. Don't care if you're 80 years old, you're still a child to the most high. Read. Suffer little children and forbid them not. Prevent them not. So how can the elder sit here and prevent his children when Christ commands us not to forbid them, not to prevent them? And forbid them not to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. For such is the kingdom of heaven. And so we talked about the, that one that was lost, that was going astray, that's trying to come back. Do you understand the spirit it takes for one to come back? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. <laughs> As we said, it'd be better that a millstone was tied around your neck you drown the sea if you suffer him. I mean, if you uh, um, forbid him. See, so any of them, so really, it, it, it ain't about an elder, but the most high. So the brother and sister don't gotta apologize to me or the elder, you know, apologize to the most high and come back. Mm -hmm. I'm just his messenger, I'm just his servant. He's calling you back, not me. When I call you back, it's because it's he's forcing me to, but it's him using us. That's the pure, true operation of how it works. You, you mind your own business, most I put your spirit and call your, your, uh, your, your, your sister. Call your brother. And you fight it sometimes. But you still must be obedient and do it. Okay? Read. Suffer, suffer little children and forbid them not to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. For such is the kingdom of heaven. Those who are making the kingdom of heaven must. Be as a little child. Okay? Mm -hmm. Let's go. Next precept, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 20. Listen, brothers and sisters, we, we just talked about this. Like, how can the Holy Spirit bring something back if we ain't put it in no work? Right? It says for us to desire the sincere milk of the word, right? Read. Once again, that's 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 20. And it reads, Brethren and sisters, be not children in understanding. Be not children in understanding. So does that mean that we're we supposed to come to church and be passive listeners? La -uh. Or is each brother and sister supposed to stay themselves approved before the Most High? Uh -huh. You see the difference? Be not children in understanding. Read. How be it in malice be ye children. In malice, in the flesh, be ye children. Possess not the spirit of an adult, a wicked adult, in this truth. Again, malice is the spirit of Satan. It's not of the most high. Mm -hmm. So be innocent of the spirit of malice. Okay? Read. How be it in malice be ye children, but in understanding be men or perfect. We must grow up to perfection in the doctrine of Christ. To be able to, to truthfully discern wicked from good, from righteousness. To make judgments in righteousness. Mm -hmm. 
how we conduct ourselves, we, we, we will be able to, like I said, see Satan coming a thousand miles away. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes. You know, I would imagine the other few definitions of that word. So that uh, last word there, where it says, in understanding be men, that word men in the Greek is G5046, and it actually means completeness or a full age and perfect. Perfect, which Christ commands us to be perfect. Okay? Mm -hmm. You know, you command anything different. Everybody say that they ain't perfect. You must become perfect in your understanding and in your walk. Three. Uh, next precept. Romans chapter uh, chapter 16 verse 19 Let's talk about that that perfect be perfect right well, you can't be perfect if you're not obedient Romans chapter 16 verse 19 and it reads for your obedience is come abroad unto all men for your obedience have come abroad unto all men these are men and women who are operating the spirit of Christ amongst people who think they are master, they have the mastery of the law these are people who are operating different on the Sabbath Holy days operating different. They're, they're no longer doing the sacrifices, but they're still worshiping and gathering on the holy days as Christ commanded. There's been noise abroad. It's a people that's operating different because they've been obedient. They have they are growing to perfection. Read. For your obedience is come abroad unto all men. I am glad, therefore, on your behalf. But yet I will have you wise unto that which is good. And simple concerning evil. See, I've been saying about being able to discern wickedness from righteousness. Have you wise into what's good to the most high, but simple into what's evil? Get the word simple for me. Mm -hmm. Romans 16 19, simple. That's G 185, and it says, uh, innocent or harmless. Being perfect, you must be innocent or harmless. Innocent until what's evil, concerning what's, what's evil. Huh. What's evil is breaking the Most High's law. Wise until what's good to the Most High. So you're operating in righteousness because you're wise. You understand what the Most High commands of us, and we're and you're doing it. But innocent or what's evil. See? Let's precept. Next precept. So as a babe, we are to be innocent into what's evil. Right? Because a, a, a babe don't have all those prejudices and all that stuff in them. My son just want to play. He don't care who it is. You know what I'm saying? All he want to run around, have somebody chase him. Chase somebody. You know? That's how we're supposed to be when it comes to this war. Innocent until what Satan is trying to entice us to live, like, to live with. To live in. You know, you know you what I'm saying? To live in? It's like, it's like what the Lord, the Most High said, that a man would do it, he would live in it. It become our way of life. So we're innocent to the way of life that Satan has programmed us. We've been converted. And we, and we no longer operate in such. We're innocent to it. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians the, the, uh, full three. up. First Corinthians chapter three, verse one, and it reads, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. Now Paul is saying the same thing that I've said often. Huh? Hey, I'm fine. I, I, I see that. It says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto the spiritual, but as unto carnal. And that's why, if you notice the lessons, that's how the lessons are set up. Speaking as unto the carnal. 
outside of, of this room, our, our brothers and sisters are carnal. That means fleshly. When you're fleshly, that means that, that you're serving the will of the flesh. You're worldly. You're contrary to what the Most High commands. So the law is for what? Correction. Mm -hmm. For reproof. For instruction in righteousness. But the man and woman of God may be fully furnished in all good works. So that's why we have to speak as it says the kernel. Because the law is for the kernel. The law is not for the righteous. And those are here. Y'all. Me. Every day we're trying to master this law. So I have to speak to you as to the kernel. Why? It says, I have fed you with milk. All our lessons are milk. Right now, this is milk. We don't have, to me, deep lessons. Like for what? What would us get in, in, into the times do for us? Like if I was to do a lesson upon time, what good would that do to us? What's the importance when Christ says no man, even him, no angel, no not, no him, no the time of the, no, of the day of the Lord? So how can I say and lie to you and say, okay, we in this era, you know, prophecy, we don't know. Because he said he cut the day short. For the purpose of the, I mean, for the sake of the saints, uh, or no flesh will survive. What Satan's about to do to this world? How can I say a lie you say, no, this is the last three and a half years according to prophecy? That's wasting time and, and, and you know, that's futile. But to give you milk, because I say, I tell you all the time, milk is what's going to save us. Mm -hmm. So our lessons are redundant, because it's, it's called education. Education is of redundance. Right? I hope that we get it. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is amongst you envies, envies, and stripes, and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men. So the issues that we have going on are kind of. Mm. Issues brothers and sisters say they have, they're kind of. You're walking according to the men of this world, of the way of this life. If we operate in the spirit, whatever a brother and sister do to you, we will first forgive them. And they should forgive us. I mean, that's the law. Like, do y'all, I, I said all the time, it's in, it's in the law. Do you know that it's in the law? For those who are out there who may watch this, it's against God's law to hold a grudge against your brother or your sister. So any of us in here holding a grudge, you're willfully sinning. Do you know the danger of that? Do y'all know the danger of that? Mm. You can't help, that's, I mean, that's, that millstone that's drowning in the bottom of the sea. Because, brother, what's that called? What's the word, what's the word that you asked about? Haunting. Haunting. That's a haughty spirit. That's a, haunting spirit. <clears throat> that's a practical spirit. Like, you think that much of yourself. Seriously. That's what I say all the time. Ain't no offense worth your soul. You think that much of yourself that you're going to hold something against your brother and you begging the most high for mercy? Every day. Real, it's real talk. Seriously, do you get the picture? If, if you think your brother and sister have an with you, go to your brother and your sister. Let not the sun go down. Go. And if they willing to forgive you, you must receive them. You can't say, well, no, no they ain't said right. They really didn't mean that. You can, that's not for you to judge. They say, I'm sorry, I forgive you. That person had better forgive you or forgiving you. Mm hmm that's between them and the Most High. The Most High knows. Like, like Christ warned about the, uh, their angel always behold the face of the Most High. Do you understand what Christ is telling us? You hold that girl, you think that ain't getting reported to Christ? But real talk, let's, let's, let's get it right, people. And that's what bothers me about the brothers and sisters who think we got a, I got a problem with them or whoever got a problem with. I have no idea. Uh -huh. But I love myself way more than that. I got a family riding on my back, man. Mm -hmm. A whole wife, a whole daughter. I mean, and 
a whole son, a whole mama. And a spiritual family. Come on now. And a whole thank you. Mm. Uh, My burger's even heavier. Thank you, brother. Uh, a whole <laughs> church. If it's two people, that's two four people to me. So I'm a whole of girls against a brother? <laughs> for real. Do you know it's more damnation to for me than you? Both to the pastor. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I ain't trying to know. I ain't trying to hear that from Christ. So I'm, I'm serious. I, I wouldn't go every day, but brothers and sisters, if y'all think I got a problem with you, you are. Satan has thoroughly misled you. I want to get the kingdom. I love y'all, and y'all know that. Y'all cut it out. Like I said, cut it out, man. Get Satan out your mind and get in here, sit down, and, and, and get back in class. Real talk. Just like that. Y'all know me. I don't have nothing against nobody. I'm like the angels who tremble before the Most High. I ain't when they gonna play with them. I love you, but you ain't that important. Now y'all here to just put my soul, you know, mm. to sacrifice my soul. Just give it all to Satan. For a spat. A misunderstanding. Like, seriously, like, like a babe, we must be in this. Seriously, we see kids running around all the time. My son primarily. He didn't hit somebody. Somebody get to crying. And, but when he get to crying, it's because they crying. He sincerely saw me. And he right back at, at it again, playing. Is that not how, that's, that's an example. As in heaven, also on earth. He giving us children as examples of how to operate. Yes. The children used to operate, we used to operate that way until the adults. So mm -hmm. We were innocent at one time. Then mm -hmm. the adults used to get into our situation uh -huh. and they turned them into something that it didn't have to be. And then you have like generational enemies mm -hmm. because the adults got involved. Mm -hmm. But as a kid, they fight, they touch each other and you stop it. And five minutes later, they playing. But mm -hmm. then this mom will get mad at this one. And mm -hmm. next thing you know, the adults are arguing and the whole family just don't like each other. Yeah. So that's how I came up. I never been bored. My family nothing. You know? I came to a generation where you got a problem. We went behind the school. We got a little round circle. And we fought. This is like in middle school. You know? We fought. My homeboy lived four houses from me. We scrapped it. But after that, we shake hands with each other, we back out there playing ball. You see what I'm saying? Yes. But she said, too, a lot of men was around. Yeah, a lot of, a lot that, of that, that made us fight. Now it's a lot of women yeah. who get involved in these yeah. spats yeah. and it yeah. turns into some other. Yeah. You see? But, so, whatever the issue is, that's why the Most High says, go your brother and sister and work it out. Because nine times ten, it ain't what you're even thinking about. So, like again, we must all continue to pray for the, for the spirit of a child. I, I, tell you, I mean, a kid is not going to sleep worrying about how somebody, you know, what happened that day. They having dreams of, you know, whatever they dream about, some, you know, Paw Patrol little or something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, so we can't be as adults. You know, it matters to be, be us, be children. You know? Let's go. Uh, next precept, Romans chapter 6, verse 4. chapter 6 verse 4 therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the father even so we also shall, shall walk in newness of life two things that I want to focus on three things those of us that are baptized it says that we are buried with him by baptism into death now, all of us in here know what that means. 
Those ones who have got, got baptized mean that an old person who is supposed to have died in the water. Uh -huh. Our old way of thinking, our old way of operating, our old way of conducting ourselves should have been mortified, destroyed. If not mortified, then in the act of mortifying. Okay? It says that like as Yasha being raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, by the power of the Father, it was the Most High who raised Christ up, not Christ himself. Mm -hmm. That same spirit is supposed to be operating us, raising us up, us up as children of his, of his. Although the Most High is the Father of all, he only claims those that are obedient. And he shows us through the Bible what being a son or a daughter is. Even as a physical father, Abraham, even though we are the bloodline, we, we the bloodline from, from Abraham, we the offspring of him, say, you're not the children of Abraham if you don't do the works of Abraham. Mm -hmm. You're the child of the flesh. And the child of the flesh, their father, is Satan. So it's about who you who you pledge your allegiance to concerning the most high. Because this kingdom is not like us coming out of Egypt. This kingdom must be worked for. You see? To prove our obedience. Right? Adam, going back to our father Adam. Adam was supposed to prove his obedience. He used what Satan created. Okay, Satan planted the street, the most high could destroy it. He didn't use it to tilt. But since it's there, the most high would, would, would change some wicked and, 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 and have it for a, a righteous cause. But Adam was supposed to prove himself to the most high. Show the most high. Okay, it's like for example, I can't stop what goes on in this world. But I, I pray when, I, when, my, when my wife and I install and, and my mother and, and install in y'all, install in our child. Prevents him from making the bad, making the wrong decisions as as he grows. Right. Most high will time keep on ticking, but we can't stop him. But the, how we conduct ourselves around them, him, and, and these children, they they have a, they will come to a, a day where they have to make a choice. It's like us. Adam had a choice. You see, he the most high they create robots. So, the same power that raised Yahshua, we believe in, in, in Yahshua's resurrection, is what is what's operating us and changing us to be adopted as sons and daughters of His. Or we be adopted as a son and daughter of the Most High. It's to be obedience. Proving what side you're on. Okay? Then it says, even so we also should walk in newness of life. If walking in newness of life, what does that mean? That don't mean you was broken, now you're rich. You <clears throat> know what I'm saying? You were struggling, now you can buy toys and all and, and shiny things. That's not what it's talking about. Newness of life. A new way of thinking, a new way of operating. If the power of the most high spirit is working in you, if, if his power and spirit ain't working in you, someone else's spirit and power is working in us. See what I'm saying? Where we at? Uh -huh. uh, next precept, First Peter, chapter one, verse twenty-three through Once again, that's 1 Peter chapter 1, 23. Go to 25. 16. Con, 16 through 25. Just, Go to 15. 15. Okay. Nope. Sorry, 14. Mm -mm. Go to 13. Y'all leave me alone today. 1 Peter's where we at. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. 
through 25. And it reads, Wherefore, wait, okay, yeah. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. How do we gird up the loins of our mind? With the words of the Most High. Mm -hmm. Gird means to do what? Cover. Cover, protect. Mm -hmm. So we protect our mind because what's operating in our, in our mind? Spirits. Wicked spirits. Influence us to do what's against the Most High. Mm -hmm. So His Word is what protects us because now we have knowledge on what's good to the Most High. And I commend it if we love the Most High, we follow commandment and and do and and, and and perform righteous judgments. And as Christ says, we say this all the time, as Christ says, it is written, thou should not. Thou should not. It's written, the Most High says this. The Most High says that. So now we go in for our, our loins of our mind. The things that's in our mind. So now we won't be easily deceived we say he's wild, so it's, it's snares. Been enticed to see him because we know how the Most High feel about the matters. So, girl, protect your mind from the voices of the devils. Notice I said devils. It's more than one. There's myriads of them. Okay? Read. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, yes, clear-headed, and hope to the end for the grace that is that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Yahshua. And hope to the end for the favor, for the grace that is to be brought unto you, my people. It's written that the kingdom would be brought to us from heaven by God through Christ. See how the scriptures go together? It says... And hope for the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelations, revelation of Yahshua. As obedient children, as obedient children, we've been talking about being obedient children all day. That's the title. Mm -hmm. We must be obedient children to the Most High. And if there is no law, what are we being obedient to? Mm -hmm. You beat it to yourselves? Right. Your own personal interpretation, what you think is right? Well, it's written that it is not granted to man to direct even his steps. Mm. As obedient children, not fashioning ourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. Not fashion ourselves according to how we formerly live according to the flesh. All of us at one time we lived according to the will of the flesh. We did what we wanted to do. Okay. Now, as new creatures, we must only do things that the most high command us to do. That's what the new creatures should do. But as it but but as he which have called you in is holy. Let me read that again. But as he which have called you is holy. See, there's a calling. The Most High has sent his spirits out to gather his children, to teach his children about their God, about themselves, inform them of, our, of their inheritance. You get it? What says the Most High is holy? What does holy mean, y'all? Separate, morally clean. Separate, set apart, morally clean. So the Most High is separate from all his disobedient angels that he created. That he say are the gods of this world. So the Most High is separate, set apart from the, from the gods of this world. He's morally pure. As our Creator is morally pure and separate, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Okay, we know conversation means your conduct and your speech in all manner. No excuses. No exceptions. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And that's a commandment. Okay? 
How far are we going? Twenty five. Uh, twenty. Yep. And if. And if he called on the Father, check it out, man. And if he called on the Father, who without respect of persons judges according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourner, sojourning here in fear. So if you call on the, on the Father, who has no respect of person, he don't favor me over you. He said, what's good for the goose, good for the game. He said he would judge every man according to their work. Did you operate in his law or not? Pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. In fear of what? The time that we're sojourning on this, on this land, we should be walking in fear of his wrath. Right? Right now, if any of y'all say that you to my son, your, your daddy gonna whoop you, he gonna be in fear. He knows it's coming. You know what I'm saying? And he see he started trying to make all kinds of excuses. I can see that, daddy. Oh man, <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? But the most high, ain't, yeah. Oh man. You know. But the most high ain't ain't, ain't going for our excuses. Did, did you, are you gonna do it or not? As obedient children, he commands us to serve him. So while the time he has given us through his grace, we should be walking in fear of him. Okay. Again, recognizing that we have an angel of presence as a reporter. And guess what? The angel of presence, love the most high more than he love us. Or she love your, you. They fear the most high. So they go, they, what you say, they going to tell the most high. There ain't no cold of, you know, snitching. <laughs> no, they going to snitch. You get it? On, on us. For, for as much as ye know that ye are not redeemed with, with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversations or conduct received by traditions from your fathers. See, that's what people get confused at. That's what Peter was trying to tell the people. The offers and sacrifices is not what's redeeming you and it's only for us now. Christ is king. So those are corruptible things that our fathers gave, gave to the no to the altar. Things that fade away. Things of no value to the most high. So we was not redeemed because our fathers was offering atonements for our sins. Through the, through the sacrifice of animals. Right, them little shekels don't mean nothing to the most high. Shekels of uh, how do you say it? <laughs> For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of the Messiah, redeemed by the precious blood. He said precious for a reason. This is the most high's best. And we think we can sin under Christ? But with the precious blood of the Messiah, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who barely or truly was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifested in, in these last times for us. Whom by, who, who by him do believe in the most high. It's by Christ that we believe in the most high. He's the most high's faithful servant. He's the one that the Most High has used to redeem His children. His precious blood. Without this sacrifice, there would be no us. And guess what? The Most High life would still be going on good. He don't need us. We need Him. Right? Like for example, we talk about this all the time about at our jobs. I always have so much pride that we this and we that at work. The job don't need you. No matter how much you think you're 
you, 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 how bad you think you're at your job, they don't need you. When they replace you, that company is still operating. So if the whole earth and people were destroyed, the most high created the heavens before he created the earth. You get it? So does he need us or do we need him? See? But he loved us so much that he sent his son. And desired none of us to perish. So it's through the sacrifice that the most high provided through his son Christ that we have opportunity to come back to our father and God. Only if we are obedient to his son. Because that's the prophet. It was prophesied that if whoever listens to him should be saved. Whoever don't listen to him will be destroyed. So I don't know what these Christians teach teaching about, you know, ain't no laws. Christ don't wear with the law. Because what are you doing that Christ they do? That's what I'm going to know. Christ never said the Sabbath was done away, but even in his going away, he says, pray that your, your flight be not on the Sabbath or in the winter. He wasn't fleeing with us. He knew this, this, this fleeing in 70 AD would come after his death. He spoke of a Sabbath. You know, he that keep my word is he that loves me. He that don't want me. So what word are you talking about? I have gave him your word. What word did Christ give his disciples? The laws of the Most High. That's again, we, 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 we're we in the back for you. The rich man came to Christ and asked him, you know, what it takes to get into the kingdom. He, he quoted him the, Moses, the Mosaic law. I mean, people, it's how to wake up. I mean, the, these, these, like, these are the signs of the time that the Messiah warned us about. People can say all they want to that like even the Bible prophesied of this day. Say they be scoffers. People saying that it's the same thing been going on since, the, since, since Adam and Eve. But I can testify myself. Ain't nobody in this room can, can everybody can testify too. When I was growing up, it wasn't like it is right now. This is 2 Timothy chapter 3. It's not like it was time has sped up and has and it says and they had wax growth worse in, in, in their iniquity. Homosexual was deep dark in the closet under the bed or something. When they came out they got beat up, chased or whatever. Practically stoned. But today they're running the world. Is that not a change for the worse? Transgender things hmm. are in grade schools, kindergartens, second, third grade schools, rooms, classroom, teaching children about LBTG. That was not never been allowed back when I was coming up, and I, I'm 47 years old. So the Bible is referring to itself. So what? LGBT this is gonna be the last broadcast. <laughs> it's coming to you can talk you can talk about Jewish people before you can talk about them. Can't say about them folks. No, no. And they were talking about some bullying. You know what I'm saying? You bullying yourself right in the classroom. <laughs> anyway, let's go. Who we at? Uh, I think verse twenty one. Who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in the Most High. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. Now you see how it says that? It says, seeing you have purified your souls. How do, you, how do, how do we purify our souls? In obeying the truth. If you don't obey the truth, you're defiled. Through the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, unto unfriends love of the brethren. So again, if you don't, we don't love our brothers and sisters, we're hypocrites. Mm -hmm. See that ye love one another with a pure heart, 
fervently. <clears throat> do you love yourself, brother? Love you. When you, when, when you, when you make a mistake, do you forgive yourself? What's the first thing that you say? No, but when you make a mistake. Oh, okay, oh, you're right. Now you change now a little bit. So you pray to the most high. You ask for forgiveness, right? So that's forgiveness. Okay. But when I talk to myself, you know, I pray to the most high too. You know. But I'm like, my bad. You know what I'm saying? My bad. When I'm dealing with myself, my bad. Like, sister somebody breathes some up. No, that's my fault. My bad. And then I pray to the most high. So if we fear somebody, or they sent us or whatever. That with the same speed, mm -hmm. we must forgive them. Again, why? Because we know the spirits that's an operation that are trying to overcome us. See, because that would be going against the law. It says, it says, see that you, you love one another with a pure heart fervently. See? You love me, sister? A little bit. <laughs> but that's what it's all about you know like I swear I ain't no new love that, that little girl over there you know that's why he pulls her hair because he don't know what to do yet you know but what I'm saying though that's unfinished love right there I'm being I'm being uh, you know me thanks for the, for the correction so that's how we must be as little children. Okay. Good. Verse 23. Being born again. Being born again. We must be born again. Read. Not of corruptible seed. When our, when our mothers spit us out, we was born of a corruptible seed. Our education came through our parents, our family. Our, our, our friends, our environment, all corruptible seeds. Okay, read. But of incorruptible by the word of God. So, so we're born again by the word of God. It's the word of God that is transforming us. If we are obedient children. Read. Which liveth and abideth forever. Which liveth and abideth forever. So what the Most High said way back in the day, my people, has not changed. He don't change with the times. Malachi 3, 6 says, God, he does not change. His counsel is forever. Even after the earth is destroyed and there's new heaven and new earth, his word is still going to be by. He's still going to be talking. Okay? Read. For as all flesh is as grass. Check it out. Listen to what Peter is saying. Flesh, the pride of life, those things, the haughtiness, brother, the malice, the envy, the stripes, the will of the flesh, the way of men, the glory of man. So check it out. Whatever man can accomplish in this system is of the flesh. It's temporal. Right now, the Toronto Raptors won a, a so-called NBA championship. I think most high care about that. It's temporal. The whole world did not watch the game, but that world did. You see what I'm saying? There's people in other countries who care less about the basketball game. So it's people who can care less. Most high game nothing to do with that. That's vain glory. That's temporal. And in that world, they're at their height of their glory. You see what I'm saying? It's nothing. All, all they're doing is drinking. Smoking, fun of cable. Taking pictures, holding the uh, 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 golden idol. Sounds familiar? A golden idol. Okay? But so, read. For as all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. So he's comparing whatever man can do in the flesh is as a flower and grass. Read. And the grass withereth. And the flower thereof falleth away. See that? But our people are striving for this. This is not real glory, people. Being so called successful in this world, being somebody in this world, is not real glory. 
It says grass and the flower that fall off and wither away. Without the most high in Christ, we a bunch of hay. Dry up grass. Good for, for what? Be burned. Read. But the word of the Most High endures forever. The word of the Most High endures forever, and those who keep his word endure forever. Mm -hmm. Read. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. And this is the word by Christ's doctrine, his gospel, that's been preached unto you. Next precept. Next precept, the book of John, chapter 1, verse 12 and 13. Born again, right? John chapter 1. Mm -hmm. John chapter 1. 1 verse 12 and 13. I read it. Check it out, right? Kind of when you're there. Now, back to being born again, right? Verse 12 reads But as many, talk about the Messiah, the Word of God, but as many as received him, to receive Christ, like the same way when it says you must believe on Christ. These are the ones who believe on Christ. That he was the Messiah. And kept his commandments. They received him. Most of our people rejected him. Esteemed him not. But to receive him, to believe on him, don't just mean that, like I said, that, he did, that you know he died for you. These are those who believed on him and continue following him. As we today, we believe on Christ. And we continue following him. His sayings. His laws, that the commandments that he gave us through his father, from his father. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God. See? He came to his own. As, as it says, matter of fact, let me just get it. Verse uh, 11. He came into his own. And his own received him not. That don't mean all of them, because this says some received him. But but, but Christianity, a lot, a, lot of, a lot of documents of Christianity say that you know that that Israel uh, we, we rejected Christ and, and Gentile became his people. That's not true. So these are his chosen people. But to be considered now a son of God, his people had to receive Christ. See? Gave him power of the Holy Spirit. To become sons and daughters of the Most High. Because these other children of his, he cast off as bastards because they disobedient and rejected Christ. And the same thing goes for us today. We reject Christ, we cast off bastards to the Most High. We're not his children. Which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh. Number 13. I did 12. Okay, I get 12 again. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believed on his name. See, believing on his name is not this, though, because you know his name. They represent him. Mm -hmm. They're his disciples. They are representatives of the Messiah. That's what believing on his, his name means. You're carrying his name. <clears throat> So if they see you, they see Christ. That's what that means. That don't, again, people, that don't Christians, they don't believe that that don't mean because you believe in his name. Y'all ain't calling him by his name. Jesus is not his name. Okay? But let's go. Which now check it out. Which were born, not of blood. So so the most highest children now are Israel. But he said he's going, but most of, he said a remnant of Israel should be saved. He's starting with his destruction with us. First. He's throwing a lot of his children first. Before he even <laughs> deal with the Gentile. But let's go. Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh. So this ain't nothing that we can do on our own. This born again is not of us. None of us were desiring to be children of the Most High. This don't mean because we're Israel. 
with the Son of God. Okay? Which were born not of the not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of men, but of God. Of the power of the most high. His spirit is what he what he's using to, to, to teach us, re-educate us, gather his saints. Next precept. Next precept, John chapter 3, verses 5 through 8. Thank you. <clears throat> Five. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Y'all should answer, verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto thee, or you, except a man be born of water and of the spirit. See, baptism also goes with this born again process. Because when one is baptized in the proper names and doctrine of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Ahaya, Yasha, and Mawakadash, you receive the Holy Spirit, Mawakadash, or wisdom. Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So you must be baptized, and you must learn his doctrine and do it. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. We came to this world, we was born of flesh, and we acted according to the flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So we say we're in Christ, we must be in the spirit of Christ, representing Christ, doing as Christ did, to the fullest. Marvel not that I said unto you, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listed, or where it prefers. And thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell which it comes and whether it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. But people, men don't know who's dealing with us. They can't tell who's changing you. They don't know the Spirit. But they can see it. You can feel the wind, right? But you can't see it. Right? Next precept. James chapter 1, verse 17 through 25. And it reads. <clears throat> hmm? Oh, almost. Oh, okay, wrong one. Oh, no. Wait, uh, I want to start at 17. Oh, I'm sorry. Salaki, 17. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Salaki, James chapter 1, verse 17 through 25. And it reads, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. It's talking about the Spirit, the Holy Spirit that comes down from, from the throne of the Most High sent by Him. A perfect gift, a good gift. It comes from the Father of lights. What's the Father of lights? The Father of spirits, the Father of angels, the Lights you see in the sky are angels, Father of lights, or the Lord of hosts, the, the Lord of spirits. Read. But this gift comes from the Most High. The Holy Spirit comes from the Most High. Read. Of His own will begot He us with the Word of Truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of His creatures. So it's the will of the Most High, not of man, that we become sort of a first fruit to Him. Right. A gift to himself, a first fruit offering. You know, the, 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 the first fruits of what man brought to the Most High. He's bringing us to himself. Three. Right? Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, 
Let every man be swift to hear. This is what I'm saying. This is the will of the Most High. He's trying to teach us something. Be swift to hear. Read. Slow to speak. Slow to wrath. Slow to wrath. Slow to speak. So you ain't got to just always have to, you know, be quick to talk about something. Or to refute. But slow to wrath. Slow to anger. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engraft work, engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. Read the part again. Come. And receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. Which was able to save our souls? Which is able to save your souls. So why don't we read the Bible? Hmm. Hmm. Why don't we read the Bible? Do y'all see why the world wants to read the Bible? Mm -hmm. It's able to do what? Is that important, my people? Come. The engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. It is what we said, born again. You're born into a new creature by his, by his words. Is that powerful? That's why they work so hard to get us away from his book. Say they want you to save your souls. Let's preach that. Go ahead. Uh, down to 25. Go ahead and get it. Yeah. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of this word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Now check it out, right? Now, where we at? Uh, that was 25. Want me to start I'm, back up? I don't know. I'm going to get uh, 22. It says, Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So for us that read this Bible, why are we doing what it says? Seriously, think about that. Why don't you do what the Bible says? Why do you do things that the Bible say do not do? We have put in men, esteem men more than, than our creator. Again, with these pagan holidays, the Most High never condoned a pagan holiday. He said he hates your feast days. He wasn't talking about his own. He don't hate his own holy days. They have real significant meaning. That leads to our salvation. The blowing of the trumpets... The last trumpet, it comes from the, from the, from the, 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 the holy day, blowing trumpets. When Christ returns you, the last trump is the filling, the blowing of trumpets, holy day. Not Christmas. Not Father's Day. Sabbath. He, he commanded the Sabbath to Israel, house of Israel, forever. His laws are forever. But if any, he says, for if any be a hearer of the word, and now a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in the glass. For he beholdeth himself, and go his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he is. He, I mean, do, do you get that? So if that's like us coming to class, you know, listen to the uh, lesson. As soon as you leave class, you, you ain't applying nothing that you heard. I mean, what, what part didn't you get? 
brother, if you're up with me and you heard me at the class today about forgiving your brother, loving your brother, <laughs> unfriends, they say unfinch, unfinch. Well, what part did you get? It's like you looking at yourself and getting who you are. You see what I'm saying? Or me. It says, but who, let's check it out. It's how important it is to read and do this word, in this word. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, that's the, that's the law of Christ, people. The perfect law of liberty. That don't mean you're free from the law. It's a law. He said law of liberty. And continue therein. So you must continue in Christ's law. He being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. What work? Keeping his commandments. This man should be blessed in his deeds, in his doing of the law. If any man among you seem to be religious. Where are we going? 25. Okay. Let's preset. Where are we at? John, First John? 1 John 3. 1 to 10. Anybody there? Behold. What? Check it out. Behold. Look. Dig deep. Look at this, y'all. What manner of love the Father hath showed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. That's not what Christ said. But all the stuff we're saying about being born again and being, being an obedient child of the Most High, understand what it's saying, what John is saying. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath for us. Christ came for sinners, one who was sinless. The most high sent of a sacrifice to save his, his, his peculiar people. Christ came under the law to redeem those who were under the law. Who were all sinners who, were, according to the law, should be dead. But how faithful our God is. He promised us that he would remember our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He will not cast his people, his children off. But will send his sons and give them an opportunity to be reconciled back into him and have peace with him. So all my people that walk around talking they're saying you're not saved from nothing. Because those obedient children are saved from his wrath. If you're not a doer of his word, what is his word? His law, statutes, and commandments. We're reading commandments right now in the New Testament. He's highly upset with you. And his wrath is, is reserved in heaven for you. When Christ comes down, he's not coming to rapture you. He's coming down to destroy you. But behold the love he has for you. Respect what he has done. For it's written that it's more sorrowful punishment for sinning under Christ than it is of Moses. But he desired none of us to be destroyed or perish. So be a doer of his word. That's love. He didn't have to do this. We was not even looking for him. He searched for us as that one lost sheep that he was talking about. He searched for us. We didn't search for him. Was anybody in his room searching for him? We was wilding up in the mud. Just, you know what I mean? Wilding out. Okay? Right, like yeah, living our best life. Okay. So we got behind closed doors. Yeah. Right. That we should he said that we sh that we should be called the sons of God. That's a privilege. Therefore, the world knows us not. We're not operating as the world as we once did in the world. The world don't don't understand. They want to go against it. Make excuses and and, and, and you know and, and be scoffers at us. Well, no, we ain't, ain't got to do all that. You know, it's just no, you know, you know, you can, you know, as long as you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, I'm a good person, you know, and my heart is right and I do good to people, that's not in the Bible. You know, what does it say just to be good to people and, and, and you're going to be saved? You know. It says, it knew, it, it knew him not, beloved. Now are we the sons of God, and it do not yet appear what we should be. But we know that when he shall appear, 
we should be like him as we should see him as he is. And every man that have this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. How are you living the same life that you always live and say you in Christ? If you had this hope in Christ, you would purify yourself as he is pure. He was righteous. We must be righteous. According to the most high standards. Whosoever commit a sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. It's showing you that the law still exists. This is John. Mm -hmm. After Christ has resurrected, sits on the right hand of the Most High, his Father and God. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. That would mean he came and died. You can continue doing what you're doing. If you be a doer of the word, Humble yourselves, like, 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 like it's written in, um, in Jeremiah. Come ye, why she clean? Come ye, why she clean? Let us reason to, to uh, let us reason together. Put away your, your evil doings. Then you receive Christ, and do as Christ commands, you will be reconciled and, and have the privilege and the blessing. To be in peace with the Most High and be called a son or a daughter of the living God. Whosoever abided in him sin not. Whoso believe on him, whoso believe on his name, sin not. See the difference? You can't be out here sinning and call him say you believe in Christ. Whoso sinneth not, whosoever sinneth, whoso sinneth have not seen him, neither know him. He ain't dealing with you. Because you rejected him. If you knew him, you would definitely not sin. You would be, you would be scared to be in a category that's, that, that's gathered together as the, the, uh, the uh, terrors are and burnt in the fire. Say, give his angels, send, send his angels a charge. And all those who are disobedient, he would send his angels, give him a charge and gather you up and burn you in the fire. Eternal fire, hell fire. How you not afraid of that and you calling on Christ? Christ is not coming down, sliding down no rainbow, people. All happy go lucky and jolly and just forgiving everything that you've done because you love him. With your mouth. He's coming with fury, the wrath of his father, eyes bloodshot, uh, shed red, bloodshot red, with anger. That you despised his precious blood that he shed for you, and deny his laws. Seven, little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that do his law is righteous. There's only one way to, to be righteous, do, to do righteousness. Keep his laws and commandments. He that committed sin or break God's law is of the devil. He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. He came. Why did Christ come? That he may destroy the works of the devil. He may release those who was imprisoned by Satan, trapped, entangled in the snares and traps of, of, of Satan, those who wanted to be released. And, and did and is doing what's required to stay free of him. They're choosing the most high God in Christ over Satan and keeping their commandments. Go against that, you go back in, in, in to your spider web of sin and death. Whoso is born of God, do not commit of sin. So, whoso is in the word of God, do be endure the word. 
transform them, transform it, and transform their life, or give them they have picked up their cross, have disowned themselves. As Christ says, he that pick up his cross and follow me. He that don't is not worthy of him. Pick up your cross means you're disowning yourself. And as Christ did, do only the will of the Father, not yours. Whoso is born of God, remember the one that's born not of blood and of flesh, the one that's born of God by his word and his spirit, he cannot sin. Why can't he sin? Because he loved the most high. It, 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 it's not a little fuzzy feeling you have in your heart. You show the most how you love him by keeping his commandments. For he, it says, whoso is born of God, do not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him. His word, his love, remain in him. So they have girded up the loins of their mind. They refuse to listen to Satan. Christ said, his sheep be, listen to his voice and will not hear another shepherd's voice. The seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. He loves the Most High. She loves the Most High. And in their deeds, they are proving it through their obedience. In this, the children of God are manifest. See, it's, 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 it's two fathers out here. In this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness, whoever do not his law, is not of God. Neither he that loves not his brother is not of God. If you, don't, if you don't do that, you're the child of the devil. Let's precept. 1 Peter chapter 2, 11 and 12. And it reads, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. Again, children, babies do not have fleshly lusts. They don't. Abstain from, from fleshly lusts as a child. Because fleshly lusts wars against the spirit of God. Read. Having your conversation honest amongst the Gentiles. Having your behavior and your speech honest among the Gentiles. That whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify in the day, glorify God in the day of visitation. Those who continue in his law will glorify the most high. In a day of visitation, because they'll be one of the most happy reward and show all the unrighteous individuals what they could have had. Proving the most high rights because these are the ones who did it. Proved that it was not unaccessible. It was it was it was it was grievous. It wasn't grievous. Where we at? First Peter chapter three, verse eighteen. And it reads, For Yasha also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to the Most High. That he must bring us to the Most High. And that ain't come as you will. They mean he gonna just bring all these defiled people to the, to the Most High. He died for us to put away our sins and sin no more. So he, he present us as an as a offering, as an unspotted, unblemished, sin, blameless people. Before the Most High. Right? Being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Revived, made alive by, the, by God's Spirit. Next precept. Next precept. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1 through 3.
and it reads, For as much then as Yasha hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. With the same. But you said the Bible teaches righteousness, commands righteousness. It's not telling us to continue in, in how we always live because Christ died for us. Arm yourself, protect yourself with the same mind of Christ. What was the mind of Christ? Like, 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 like she said, the Messiah said that, that the Father loved him because he always did the things that are pleasing to him. We must have the same mind of Christ. Always do the things that are pleasing to the Most High. Read. For he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. For the time, for the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. Now check it out. It said the time it suffice us to have worked the will of the Gentiles. So there's a will that the Gentiles uh, require us to live or, or do. So when we, before we knew Christ, we deal with the, we worked according to the will of the Gentiles, what they want us to do. As, as we spoke about earlier. Mm -hmm. There's a premise behind everything that they do that's against God's children. So the will of the Gentiles is what? When we walk in lasciviousness, <laughs> Lasciviousness. Okay? That, that, that has to do, you know, with uh, uh, what? Fornication. Okay? Heavenly. Okay? Cheers here, so I'm going to be good today. Okay? Lust. Excess of wine. Now check it out. Lust. The Most High said, no, do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Access of wine. It says do not be a drunkard. So the will of Gentiles for us to break God's law. Fornication, mischievousness, is lewd sexual acts. Right? Read. Revelings. Revelings. Banque banquetings. This partying, like, like we do. And abominable idolatries. Abominable idolatries. That's the will of the Gentiles. That's we, we, that goes to prove what we're saying about this, the system that they have designed against us to keep us sinful, hated by our God. So, the, like the common Gentile, have no clue of this. But those who run this country, they know again that our God is real and this book is real. That's why they, they have a will to keep the children of Israel in sin. We said it when it first started, because they know that we are the only people that God has chosen and given his laws to. And he commanded, he promised us that if we did not keep his laws, we would be accursed. So the will of the Gentiles is what we're reading. They want us to, to perform abominable adulteries. Lachievousness. Get lachievousness real quick. Mm -hmm. He's banqueting us. Isn't, isn't it amazing how all these banquets we have are on the Sabbath? Yeah. These open houses, these, these, these everything is, is on, on the Sabbath. You know, parties on the Sabbath. You know? Come, lasciviousness, G766. It says, licentiousness, sometimes including other vices. Filthy, lasciviousness, wantonness. Mm -hmm. um, it's, 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 it's dealing, you know, with, you know, like I mentioned. But let's go. Next precept, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 through 11. And you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. I mean, I'm just, I, don't, I don't get it. He said that he has revived us. When, when we worked the will of the Gentiles, we were dead in our sins. God's wrath was coming for us. But through Christ, he has reconciled us. Those are obedient children. Read. 
wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, Satan, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So you're going back to the children, either you're a child of God or you're a child of, of Satan. You, if you're disobedient to his laws, you are a child of Satan. If you are obedient to the Most High, you are his child. And we will receive him as a child. Okay? We don't receive Satan hearty. We receive Satan you know, with gladness. Because mm. he's blessing us. Right? Among whom also we all had our conversation in time past. Our conduct in time, time past. In the lust of our flesh. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And were by nature children of wrath, even as others. The children of wrath, that means, like we said, we was dead in our transgression, in our sins. But again, do you see what is promoted through the air, through, through TV programs, through music, according to the God of the air, Satan? Everything that is against this Bible. So, I hope it is. Again, anybody who read the Bible and don't believe in it, I mean, I, I, I just pray for you. Because Satan, Satan does, he believes. So much that he created a system against these laws. Because I have not seen one show, you know, promoting us keeping his laws and commandments. All my life. Even the so-called good shows we supposed to have back in the day, the good times, you know, it showed us so-called good families or whatever. They, they would break it. They, they, they keep Sabbath. They keep God's law. It was never promoted to keep God's law. They never told us to, it's a day, told us to uh, uh, you know, Cunningly, that we were the children of Israel, like in the in the, uh, good times. You know, mm -hmm. remember when, when, when the little boy told Michael, Michael told, yeah, sorry. Jesus was black. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but but you know, then in, like in little Western movies, saying that the Indians were the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. Planet of the Apes. Yeah, they, Planet Apes. The old one. Yeah, they kept, they put it in the movies, but we don't know who we are, so we don't catch it. But on all regards of how good Hollywood has tried to make a black show. Matter of fact, the so-called, the, the movie that was uh, Black Panther. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be such a good black movie. It promoted witchcraft. Okay. Necromancy. Those are ancestors. Ancestors ain't, got, can't, ain't, can't, ain't doing nothing for you right now. They getting tormented. Okay. You see what I'm saying? But ain't, so say so made appearance, he comes angel light, so he he show us what he wants us to believe is good. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? A man working, well, not, in, well, not, not in months it used to be. You know, now you see, you know, man on man, woman on, on, on woman. And, you know, that kind of stuff. That's what's good now. You know, back in the day, like good times, you had a strong man, you know, wife, children, you know what I'm saying? Jane went to work, you know, wife stayed home, cooked, you know, had good good family, supposedly, but... James was not a, a representative of Christ, nor his wife, nor his children. They were sinners. So this world, through, through the spirit of God is heir, has promoted the lust of the flesh. Mm -hmm. Against God's laws, against this book. For a reason, because he knows it's real. He knows the promises, the covenants, and the laws most high is forever. And that's why it says he's walking around on earth seeking to devour someone. How? By enticing them or offending them, enticing them to sin. Break God's law, whether you believe it or not. Let's get it. Verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Yahshua. By grace ye are saved. By grace we are saved, and that does not mean his law mm -hmm. done away with. Let me just go ahead from there. I won't go ahead, but let's get it. Mm -hmm. I think it's Romans 6. Let me see. This will show you that you no know, grace does not replace the law. By grace, by the love, by the favor of the Most High, because he loved us. He's great in mercy. That he, he sent Christ down here to, 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 to die for those. To receive a remnant of obedient children. Grace did not replace the Lord. Romans chapter 6 verse 1 reads. But what should we say then? Should we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we? 
that are dead to sin live any longer therein. Same Paul that y'all say, say the law is done away with. Dead to sin means that you are born of God. You are living his laws and commandments. You are in Christ. You are living in the spirit, following the spirit, not the flesh. Right? Verse 6. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Yahshua. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of the Most High. Mm -hmm. Not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Yahshua unto good works, which the Most High hath before ordained. That we should walk in them. Walk in them. We are created with his handiwork. He's like he said, was born of him. He has begotten us as children. It's him that is creating what's pleasing to him in us. Not of ourselves, not of our works, not of no sacrifices, none of that. But it's by his grace. It's, it's by his grace, by his will, not of ours. Okay? Great. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision is the flesh made by, by hand. Now we were just going through this early before this class was started. That don't mean that our people, he's talking Gentiles, he's talking to people like us. What book is this? Ephesians. Get there. Where? Ephesians uh, 2, that's verse 11. So it said, when you were Gentiles in the flesh, all of us when we were born and living in America, we were Gentiles in the flesh. I mean, we did the will of Gentiles. He's not talking to the Gentiles. When you were Gentiles in the flesh, you did the will of the Gentiles. Read. Uh, next priest. Oh, oh whole, it says, yeah. who, who were called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision. Mm -hmm. So the Jews who were so-called following the law was calling their brothers and sisters unclean. That's what it was. It's not saying that, that these are Gentiles. Okay. Oh, again, if, if, if my brothers and sisters who believe that in the New Testament, when, it, when it's talking about um, strangers or Gentiles, that it's talking about the Northern Kingdom, it's not. Let me, let me, let me ask you a question, brothers and sisters. I was saying, brother, this would be a uh, full class came. How was the apostles talking to the, to the uh, Northern Kingdom when they wasn't even there? Hmm. Remember, the ten tribes was over here in, in the Americas, 700 years before Christ even came. So how was he talking to the, to the northern kingdom? We say they were grafted in. Like, no, that's, that's northern kingdom. The northern kingdom wasn't even in, in, in Rome. Remember, when Simon um, kingdom got split, and, 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 and Hosea the king, and, 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 and when, when he got led into the Assyrian captivity, and they cleansed us out of our land, out of Samaria, and then in, in chapter 13 in Exodus, I mean in uh, Ezra, when it talks about us coming you know, through the Euphrates Rivers on a year and a half journey into Altarif, into a land never mankind uh, dwell of, 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 or lived, the Native Americans, the Mexicans, and Hispanics, I mean the Puerto Ricans, which you want to call them Israelites, you, that's, that's on you, the Israelites. They were over here, they were not, that was the other sheep that Christ says that is of his fold. It was not in this territory. And then how can Paul just walk around about and know who is Israelite? Of the Northern Kingdom. Huh. We've been mixing, mixing for a long time. So Paul was walking around, you Israelite, okay, you got on fringes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But if you are a Gentile in the flesh or Gentile minded, when did we start wearing fringes, brother? When you got into the truth. You read people's references? Okay, but before this, I never heard of a fringe. And in Rome and in Ephesians, they didn't know nothing about no fringes. They had the mind of a Gentile. It was raised like we were raised in America, in Jamaica, in Mexico, in Australia, as the Gentiles. So, brothers, think about it. They weren't even there. We were Gentiles in the flesh. We lived according to the flesh as Gentiles. Unclean, defiled, lawless. 
That's what Paul is talking about. That's what Peter is talking about. Let's go. Hold uh, Ephesians. Next precept, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1 through 5. Uh. <clears throat> Number what? I'm going to back it up. I got to. 2 Ezra chapter 13. I'm going to start at 39. My brothers and my sisters. I'll do pocket for And whereas thou sawest that he gathered another peaceful multitude unto him. I'm about the Messiah. Okay? In the kingdom, going to the kingdom. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Osea, the king, who Salmanasar, the king of Assyria, led away captive. And he carried them over the waters. The most high did. Okay? And so came they into another land. But, but they took this counsel among themselves that they would lead the multitude of the heathen, the Assyrians, and go forth into a further country when, where, where, where never mankind dwelt, that they might there keep their statutes. And when they got over here to America, when, when Christopher Columbus them came over here, it is in Christopher. Christopher Columbus' book. He'll tell you about how the city, they had, the city was designed straight according to God's law. They had seeds of refuge, burial sites with brothers who had fringes on, Torah, everything. Hebrew writing is still being found in, 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 in um, these lands. To this day. God's law is only given to one people. <clears throat> That point two, that they may keep their keep their statutes, which they never kept in their own land, and they enter into Euphrates by a narrow passage of the river, for the Most High then showed signs for them, and held still the flood, till they were passed over, for through that country, there was a great way to go, namely a year and a half, and the region, and the same region is called. Otsarif. Then dwelt they, he said, then dwelt they there until the later times. And now when they, he says, and now when they shall begin to come, the highest shall call, the highest shall stay the streams of the, of, the, of, the, of the streams again, that they may go through. Therefore saw thou the multitude with peace. But those that be left behind, it's not, it says that when the Messiah is the one that's here. He said, the, he said that the ships will wait for him. So the same way that they came, they're coming back to our land. So they didn't come back during the time of, of uh, the apostles. Precept on precept, brothers and sisters. So how is Paul talking to these people and they're not even there? Shalom. Let's get it. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, starting at verse 1. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by, by Yasha, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and, and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. See how the, the, the apostles are commanded obedience to Christ and the Most High? Mm -hmm. Read. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Yahshua. For this is the will of the Most High, even your sanctification. Even your sanctification. Get that word, please. Mm -hmm. Paul is talking about commandments, not in personal, private interpretations. Read. Sanctification, that's G38. It says, properly, purification. That is, the state of purity, purity, holiness. Before the Most High. They commanded holiness, puri purity, piety, before the Most High. Read. That ye should abstain from fornication. Is fornication not a sin? Mm -hmm. Is serving another God not a sin? Mm -hmm. 
is the act of physical fornication not a sin? Paul is talking about sin. Okay. Read. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Hey. That don't sound like Christianity. It, it, it don't sound like, like the, the, the apostles was, you know, as Christians are today. That don't sound like them. Somebody has done something. Somebody has changed the truth of God into a lie. Okay? Let's precept. Uh, last verse. Last verse. Verse 5. Not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know, which know not God. See? Gentiles never served the Most High. They don't know Him. So how can they teach you the Most High? They must learn from us. Back to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 12 through 22. <clears throat> and it reads that at that time you were without Yasha being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise having no hope and without God in the world guess who was in the territories there people Benjamin, Judah, Levi raised up as Gentiles strangers to, what, strangers to our inheritance same way we was born in America, in Jamaica. Strangers to our inheritance. Aliens to it. Knew nothing about it. Read. But now in Yasha, ye who sometimes were afar off and made nigh by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace. He is our priest. Peace. Not sacrifices. Read. Who hath made both one. And hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances. And that's talking about the penalty of death. That's what died with Christ on the cross. He abolished it. He gave us grace. So now if we break the law, born in ignorance, a priest can't kill us. Not a priest, but, but a servant most high can't kill us. He ain't stones for breaking the Sabbath. We don't know what the Sabbath is. So he gave us grace. He gave us time to get this thing right. Through Christ. Not the sacrifices. Even the law of commandments contained in ordinances. For to make in himself of twain one new man. So making peace. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross. Having slain the enmity thereby. Enmity is death. And and came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were not. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles of prophets, Yahshua himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Most High, in whom ye also are built together for an habitation of the Most High through the Spirit. Last precept. Titus chapter 3, verses 3 and 4. Trust me, you're not uh, in, in his habitation if you defile, breaking his laws. Okay? Uh -huh. so you're outside the body. Without it. That's precept. Titus chapter 3, verse 3. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of, of God, our Savior, toward man appeared. See that? We at one time was all deceived. 
doing the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the, our, our own will, hating our brothers, hating our sisters. But when Christ came, the love of God came, it appeared to us who we are, what we're obligated to do. All these things that we, that we have learned are evil. As children, we are the casualties off and go back into a mind of a, mind of a child, being innocent, far away from evil, seeking to please our parents, seeking to please the Most High. Do you understand that? The child does not perform the, the lust of the flesh. These things that we read about, these are things that were taught to us, either through our parents, our environment, through entertainment. Now, as obedient children, we must humble ourselves and receive the Most High in Christ and be thankful that He loved us and sent down His Son to reconcile us. So we are in debt to Christ. We are in debt to the Most High to do as they say. With that, that concludes the lesson. I say shalom. Shalom. Close in prayer. Any questions? Comments? Hmm? Anybody got it? Okay. Quam Yashala. Quam Yashala. Quam Yashala. Quam Yashala. Quam Yashala. My daughter watched some of the class today. All praise the most high. Okay.